Welcome to the Wayne State Football Preview GLIAC edition of Sports Information Director Jeff Weiss and joined today by Head Coach Paul Winters. Paul, thanks for joining us today. In looking at the upcoming 2014 roster, Wayne State has 14 returning starters, seven on each side of the ball. Who do you expect big contributions from on the offensive side this year? Well, uh, we have seven returning starters on offense, but it seems like we have 11 returning <laughs> starters um, because the entire offensive line's back. Um, basically our entire backfield because uh, Sean McAuliffe and Des Martin um, received a lot of playing time and, and we've got two quarterbacks that have started for us, really three. Um, so we're, we're excited about the guys returning. I think as you look at, um, from a, the standpoint of the strength of our offense should be our offensive line. When you have five returning starters on the offensive line, you feel pretty good about that. And um, those guys have all gotten bigger, they've all gotten stronger. Um, we didn't play well enough last year, so we, we've got we've to make some improvements. So even though we have five returners, I don't think we played well enough to, to feel great about that, but we, uh, we feel that those guys will all be better, and if each one um, individually improves, collectively the group would be really good. So we're very excited about that. At the tight end position, um, we have four guys that really played. I was going to say, I mean, yeah. Because Trent didn't play much last right. year, but well, he, was, he was redshirted because of the injury. Um, early in the year, but he was our freshman of the year the year before, and um, with Ethan, Ethan, Ethan played Ethan well. White. Nate White played well. Aaron Weston got his first action mm -hmm. as a freshman, so um, uh, we we feel that's a very strong position for us, and we're excited about that. Um, you know, with the wide receiver position, um, you start with Mike Johnson, who's a, a very talented young man, and uh, NFL scouts have taken a long look at as a big, strong, athletic um, talent. And, and we've got to find ways to use him and, and use his abilities. And um, we have some other young guys who I think had good springs and, and are really interested in, you know, competing for that job. Brandon Tinsley um, from Martin Luther King and uh, Jamel Hicks, a young man from Cleveland, are two guys that, that I think stepped up a little bit. And Will Wheat's another guy who's played some for us and has done a good job. Um, quarterback. That's the key. Everybody wants to talk about quarterback. We had three last I, year. I, I was, I, I didn't even give you a chance to ask me the question. <laughs> um, you know, as we went into the spring, we, we really tried to put a lot of heat on those guys. We really tried to make it a, a competition that was um, a legitimate competition. It wasn't any bias from me or from the coaches. It was let's go out and see what these guys can do and how how they'll perform. And uh, I thought that they really. They really did a good job, and I think um, the two guys that were really healthy and, and, and stood out were Carl Roscoe and, and Doug Griffin, mm -hmm. and um, those are the guys who played the majority of the, the games for us last year. Um, I think they both are making a, an honest effort to be the starting quarterback, and um, I think those two guys are, are, are excited about the competition. Um, we'll be better because those two guys will be better. I'm not going to tell you who's going to start because that makes it too easy on the opponents. <laughs> um, but I will tell you that um, you, you need to be prepared for everything when you play us. And obviously besides Sean Ganane, you've got Trevor Van Tubergen who redshirted last year. And you have a young man coming in from Macomb, Dakota, Tyler Correll, who by the looks of his high school numbers had quite a high school career. <laughs> Tyler is a, a very talented young man, had a great career. And I think he's just starting to, to scratch the surface. Um, he's really learning the, the position, and um, you know he's a big 6'3", 215-pound young man who's kind of like a, uh, a ball of clay. You know, you just mold him into what he's going to become. He's going to become tremendous. Um, Trevor Van Tubergen uh, is starting to pick things up. I think uh, the spring was important for him. He went from being a scout team quarterback to running our offense, and that was important. And um, you know, he all Trevor does is make plays. He never looks pretty doing it, or or would be considered a classic anything. He just goes out there and, and has a really quick release and gets the ball in their hands and and does the right thing. So you know, he's going to be part of that competition too. But um, we're excited about the position. Uh, defensively, defensive backfield. You have four returning starters. Linebacker, you've got Norris Friday coming back and Anthony DeNamos. Valorian Cunningham moved there for spring ball. Obviously, defensive line maybe is where we might see some new people step up, but who else do we look out for on the defensive side of the ball this fall? Well, if you start with the defensive line, I think that's maybe our strength. 
um, because you, you look at Ryan Hankins, um, he's a young man who's basically started two years for us at the nose, and he's a legitimate 300 pound nose man, and uh, he's active, he's, he's powerful, um, he, he's going to cause havoc for, you know, uh, a lot of teams. Um, and he's not alone because we've got Sam Silman, who's a senior and is a 285 pounder and, and is very active. And uh, Rafat is, what, 300 pounds also. Um, so we've got some size inside, and we're just always trying to work on their mobility and, mm -hmm. and being able to run around. But um, we've got competition, and, and I think anytime you have competition, you've got a chance to improve. So we're excited about that. Um, on the defensive end, we've got some young men that haven't played much that are stepping up and, and, and had good springs. Jake Carrizales is a redshirt freshman um, from Patrick Henry, and, um, the home of Zach George. And, uh, you know, he, uh, he, he had a good spring, very active, very strong. Um, Alex Medenbach is, is a guy who's starting to fill out his frame. You know, when he's a 6'4", 220-pounder um, a year ago, now he's about a 250-pounder or maybe even more and looks really good. It looks like a, a college football player is supposed to look. So we're excited about him. Um, we've had some young men come in that are going to compete for jobs. Um, Derek Coleman's a young man um, who is a part of family. He's, he's got some <laughs> pretty good genes. Um, but, you know, he'll come in and he'll compete and, and learn from those guys. And, um, you know, I can't even keep track of all the guys. But we got Lamont Baker and Blake Mazur who were redshirted at defensive tackle who also are going to compete. Um, so, you know, with Derek Rogers, a young man we signed out of uh, Chicago, he's going to come in and compete immediately as a de defensive tackle. Um, that helps. That helps us tremendously. And and, uh, and definitely for the rotation. I mean, on some of these hot days in the fall, you, right. need, you can't just keep going with four D linemen. You need to get eight or ten in there. Well, when you talk about having 300 pounders, you'd say, okay, well, what's their weakness? Their weakness probably is conditioning. Mm -hmm. You know, it's high, your 300 pounder is hard to condition. Um, but if you have six 300 pounders, <laughs> you know, they don't have to be in great shape. They just have to be able to get on and off the field, right. you know, so we're excited about those guys. Um, at the linebacker position, you talked about that a little bit. Norris Froddy is a guy who's played a lot of football for us and he's a leader and uh, he's, he's a talented young man. He, he's fiery. He, he's explosive. At one point led the league in sacks. Um, we expect a lot from him. We expect him to, to stand out for us this year. Um, no one else really has played. Um, Anthony Zedamus has played a little bit at Mike Linebacker, um, but we're putting a lot of pressure on him to be an outstanding player for us this year, and he's only a sophomore. Um, so, But he's 245, 250 pound sophomore, so we're excited about that. Blur and Cunningham, we've moved from safety to linebacker, and he had a tremendous spring. Yeah, I think in the spring game you had two or three interceptions. And just interceptions, really, sacks, you know, just... Didn't explosive. seem out of position like he had yeah. adjusted very well. I already told Ed Viverett that we've, we've forgotten his name. <laughs> so, um, I don't know if he'll be that good, but hopefully we'll have that kind of play out of him. Speaking of uh, single-digit numbers with playmaking ability, Jared Duhart has had some big interceptions over the years, or pass breakups against Winston-Salem, or what have you. What do you expect from Jared this year as a senior? Well, I think Jaron has taken the challenge. Um, you know, he didn't have a great season, and that's part of us not having a great season as a team. So he is he's refocused himself and um, has worked extremely hard. Has um, you know he's he's bigger and stronger than I think he's ever been. Um, you know, he's he's constantly working on his speed. Another young man who the NFL scouts love. Um, they love the way he plays football, and, and we love the way he plays football. Um, we expect a lot. We expect him to be a guy who plays on the field, and stops a running game, stops a passing game, and leads our defense of secondary. Um, on the on the boundary corner, we've got Brandon McKay, who 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 had to fight through some injuries last year, but when he played, he played well. Especially and, down um, the stretch. Especially down the stretch. You look at his game against Saginaw, and um, probably you know did as good a job as anybody all year playing against an All-American wide receiver. Mm -hmm. um, so we're very excited about that. Um, our two safeties, uh, we expect it to be Zach Malecki and Jamil Williams, who are going to be juniors now, so they are a little bit more veteran. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they both run, they're both athletic, um, they both have change of direction, you know, they're, they're what you're looking for. Um, I think Malecki's a 200-pounder, I think Jamil's a 195-pounder. 
you know. So that would be able to lay the lid a little bit there. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, one position that's definitely going to be a transition for the Warriors this year is special teams. The last four years, you've basically been able to say, Stefan, go out make this field goal, go out to the kickoff, what have you. But now you've got open competition for both the place kicking and punting positions. Well, we've got two young men that, that have been here and have done a good job. Um, Maj Kaitaz uh, was the backup kicker and did some kickoffs for us yeah, last year. Yeah, in the season. Yeah. And um, if you watch Maj last year and then you watched him in the spring, you wouldn't even think it's the same guy. Um, he kicked the ball with more consistency and more confidence than I've ever seen. And um, you know, from that standpoint, if he continues to progress, he'll be an outstanding kicker for us. Um, as far as punting is concerned, Paul, Paul Graham has really focused his attention and effort at becoming a better punter. And he did a good job for us in the spring. And he's competing against Ethan Walsh, who's an outstanding yeah. punter. Um, you know, don't normally see a tight end as a punter. Yeah, exactly, though. but he's so strong, he just muscles the ball and it goes 50 yards, you know. <laughs> Um, so, and then there's the other option of having Doug Griffin back there who gives us, you know, multiple options. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, we've, we've got competition at the position. We've got some young men who, who have played some football for us. Um, but like I said, Maj, I expect to, to see great things from. Sounds great. Well, thank you for watching this special GLIAC edition of Wayne State Football.